All right, so our next concept is the idea of change in energy. Okay, anytime you see this, um, let me switch to a different color. Anytime you see this triangle, that triangle is called delta. Whoops, <laughs> might help if I could spell delta. Okay, and delta always means final minus initial. Okay, so the other idea, the main idea, is that delta means change. Okay, so a change in energy equals Q plus W. Remember, Q is heat, and W is work. Okay, so heat plus work gives you a change in energy. Okay, and remember, we still have to deal with um, the signs of Q and W. If energy is coming out of the system, then Q will be negative. If work is being is coming out of the system, then work will be negative and vice versa. Okay. So in this example here, if we have, for example, like the piston in a car, um, a car engine, you have a small explosion inside that piston and it causes the piston to move up. So if our boom is our system, right? That means that heat is coming out of the system. So negative Q, right? And it's pushing against that pist piston. So looking up here in this box, the expanding gas does work. It's pushing away from the piston. So we'll have work coming out of the system. Okay, so it's important to keep those things in mind when we're doing these problems. Okay, so what this slide is showing us is in with piston number one, this, the piston moves. Okay, so we have a W, right? W, something is moving, work is being done. In the second one, the piston does not move. Right, so if there's no movement, then work equals zero. Okay, so we still have this E equals Q plus W, but if W equals zero, then all of the energy is Q. Okay, that's what's happening in the second piston here. Okay, so in order for there to be work, there has to be, something has to move. <laughs> okay. So let's take a look at an example of how that plays out. Okay, so a small sample of propane burns, producing carbon dioxide and water vapor. Okay, as the hot gas expands, it releases 20 kilojoules of heat. All right, and the important word there is releases. Okay, and then it does 31 kilojoules of work pushing against a piston. Okay, what is the total amount of energy released in this reaction? All right, so we have our energy equation, so delta. That's the triangle. Delta E equals Q plus W. Okay, so Q is heat, and it says that the system releases 20 kilojoules. Okay, so that means negative 20 kilojoules. Okay, that releases part tells us that energy is coming out. So the sign on the work, or excuse me, sign on the heat has to be negative. Okay, and then with the work, it says that the system does work. Okay, so work is coming out of the system. All right, so it says that it does work worth of 31 kilojoules. Right, so that's negative 31 kilojoules. Right, so delta E equals Q plus W. So then I just plug in those values. 
So negative 20 plus negative 31 means that the change in energy is negative 51 kilojoules. Okay, so energy is coming out. So the same signs, sign conventions apply to energy as well. So if the sign on energy is negative, that means that energy is coming out. Okay, this is exothermic. All right, so our next concept is a thing called specific heat and heat capacity. Okay, they're two separate things, but they are related. Okay, so with a kilogram of water, if I put a thousand calories of heat energy into that water, my temperature change, that should be the, the delta, my temperature change will be one degree Celsius. But if I have the same amount of iron, one kilogram of iron, and I put the same amount of energy into it, the iron will have a temperature change of 9.3 degrees Celsius. Okay, so specific heat and heat capacity are characteristics of different materials. Okay, characteristic of water, characteristic of iron, they will have different heat capacities. Now the idea of a heat capacity is um, how much energy Let me write this down. Heat capacity is how much energy it takes to change the temperature. Of a substance. Or object. Okay. And the heat capacity of water is one of the things that keeps life going on this planet. Water is actually able to absorb a lot of heat energy before it changes temperature. So if you think about all the water on the Earth and all of that thermal energy that's coming from the sun, if water changed temperature really easily with a little bit of heat energy, it would boil away and we would all die. Okay, Or life would never have happened on this planet to begin with. But water is really good at absorbing energy without changing temperature. Okay, it can absorb a lot before the temperature changes. So that keeps our um, the temperature of our oceans and hence our world very stable. Okay, so we can thank water for keeping us alive. Right? So specific heat is the amount of heat required to raise the temperature of one gram, so getting very specific here, one gram of material by one degree Celsius. Okay, so heat per mass times temperature change, and the mass will be one gram, the temperature change will be one degree Celsius. And remember, Q is heat, okay? Mass will be M, and our temperature change, remember our symbol for change is delta. So change in temperature. Okay, so specific heat is Q per mass delta T, right? So we'll say S for specific heat equals Q over M delta T. Right, so I'm going to rearrange that to put Q by itself. So Q equals M times S times delta T. Okay. This is a very important equation. We're going to be using this a ton. Okay. So this is one that you need to know. Okay. It's on your list of things to memorize. Q equals MS delta T. Okay. Sometimes you'll see the S. Um, instead of S, they'll have a C, so it'll be MC delta T, but the result is the same. All right, let's take a look at some differences between specific heat and heat capacity. 
So specific heat is the amount of heat required to raise the temperature of one gram of material. Okay. Heat capacity, on the other hand, is the heat required to raise the temperature of an object. Okay, so I can talk about like a kettle of boiling water as an object, or I can talk about just the water as a substance. Okay, so we can talk about the amount of heat required um, to change the temperature in various ways. Most of the time we're going to be dealing with specific heat. So let's get into an example problem. So how many joules are required to raise the temperature of 25 grams of water by 8 degrees? And we're given the specific heat of water as 4.184 joules per gram degrees C. Okay. So our equation for this is the Q equals M S delta T. Right, so M is mass, S is the specific heat of water, um, and delta T is the temperature change. Okay, so, and then Q is heat. Right, so M is our 25 grams. S is our specific heat, joules per gram degrees C. And our delta T, it says to raise the temperature by 8 degrees. So that's our change in temperature times 8 degrees Celsius. All right, now take a look at the units and how things are going to cancel out. So I've got grams, and then in my specific heat, grams are on the bottom. So grams times grams on the bottom, the grams will cancel out. And then in my next multiplication, I've got degrees Celsius on the bottom times degrees Celsius on top. So my degrees Celsius will cancel out. So my units of energy, of heat energy, are in joules. So when we multiply that out, we get 836.8 joules. And remembering that we need to keep track of sig figs, so really this should be 8 times 10 to the 2 joules. Okay, because we only have one significant figure in the temperature. Okay, we're going to go ahead and cut this video off here, pick it up right where we are leaving off on our next video with question 8b.